In this session, we're going to cover the economic order quantity model with quantity discounts. This is, in fact, just a variant of the basic EOQ model. Remember, in the EOQ model, we had so many assumptions. One of them that we discussed in class was that no matter what's the quantity that we order, the unit price will be the same. And we discussed together that even on a personal level, this is not very realistic, right? Because when we go and buy, let's say, a, a large uh, Pepsi uh, bottle, and we compare the price with the uh, small can, we can see easily that the unit price per milliliter, for example, will be much, much cheaper for the two liters bottles that we uh, bought. And this also, of course, applies on a business-to-business -business case where suppliers usually uh, offer price discount for buyers when they increase their order quantity. So this assumption will not be uh, there anymore. And the EOQ with quant discount model will deal with this issue. Before we start our explanation for the EOQ's quantity discount model, let's talk about a very important concept, the relevant cost concept. And let's remember what we did in the EOQ model. Remember in the EOQ model, the objective was that we need to find the quantity that minimizes the sum of the holding cost and the ordering cost. Why? We, we, we have discussed in many occasions that inventory costs have different components. Holding and ordering costs are only two. And there's a third one, which is the purchase cost. Uh, this is the highest cost. So why did we omit or why did we exclude the purchase cost from our analysis that led to finding the optimal ordering quantity? This is for a simple reason that it's only that the holding cost and the ordering cost that are function. Remember the total costs equation, it's equal to Q over 2H plus D over QS. If I wanted to uh, include all the other components, including the purchase cost, what would be the purchase cost component? The purchase cost, the annual purchase cost comes from what? Uh, it comes from the unit cost. Okay, so if I add here the unit costs, this is how much I'm paying per unit times how much I'm going to order. So I'm not going to multiply here by Q. Why? Because this total cost is the annual cost. So yes, each time I pay for the order C times Q, but I'm doing that uh, uh, D over Q times, right? The number of cycles. So in on at the end of the day, I'll be paying C times D, the annual demand. Remember, we pay for or we order a maximum quantity equal to D, and we can see that this C times D uh, is not function of Q. All right, so. That's why it was not taken into consideration when we want to find uh, uh, EOQ. Remember, how did we find the EOQ? We derived the total cost with respect to Q. So even if we left the CD component here, when it comes to deriving this component, this will be zero, which means our calculations would be exactly the same and the EOQ formula will be exactly the same. So this is why... Uh, we excluded that from our analysis. So this will explain for, for you why we are uh, uh, excluding the purchase cost. And it's exactly the same concept why we have excluded the purchase cost also in the EPQ model, because again, it's not function of, uh, uh, it's not function of quantity that we are making. So you may wonder if um, the purchase cost does not affect our EOQ, does not affect our EPQ, so why did we 
include that uh, purchase cost in the make or buy problem that we solved in the previous session. Remember this? The reason for this is that, as I mentioned before, and I promised you that I will come back to this point, that because we were comparing a make option to a buy option, and in these two options, the purchase cost or purchase price is different, then the purchase cost becomes a relevant cost to our analysis. All right, it's very important whenever we do any analysis, any mathematical analysis, to make sure that you are uh, uh, including in your analysis all relevant items. In our case, it's a cost, so it's all relevant cost. What do we mean by relevant cost? A cost would be relevant when it applies for one choice or one option and it does not apply for another choice. So, if you want to uh, consider again the make or buy decisions, we can think about different components that are different between the two options. For example, in the buy option, um, you can have to uh, pay customs, you may have to pay taxes that are imposed by the government because you are buying from an overseas supplier and it does not apply if you are making it locally. So that cost, for example, becomes irrelevant for your analysis. Uh, on the other hand, whenever we have make option, we may have to rent equipment, which is not a cost that we will incur if we buy the item from a supplier. So you see, whenever you want to make any analysis, you have to uh, consider every cost that is uh, relevant to one option, not relevant to the other option, which makes that cost a relevant cost for your analysis. You don't need to worry about that in our case. Uh, uh, we don't have um, different components of relevant costs. As you will see next, uh, all what we have to do is to add the purchase cost only to our analysis. Okay, so let's see now. Um, now we are relaxing the, the assumption that says that no matter how much you order, uh, the unit price will be the same uh, because we agreed that this is not very realistic. Okay, so what happens now when um, we have different prices? For example, if the supplier offered us the following uh, price structure. Okay, so if we if we buy anything below 500, we're going to pay $15 per unit, and it will be $14 if we increase it, and it's in the range between 500 and 999, and any quantity beyond 1,000, uh, we're going to pay uh, the lowest price, which is $13. How can we deal with such a situation? Um, the EOQ model by itself uh, is not going to uh, consider uh, these changes in the unit prices. But what we want to do is we want to add to our EOQ uh, a component, and this component is the purchase uh, purchase cost. All right. So um, here. We are facing three options. Remember in the previous example, the make or buy, we were comparing two options, the make and the buy. If we buy, we have a unit price, which is different than if we are making, and that's why it was there. And here it's almost the same thing, that we have three options, uh, but now the three options are buy options, but in every option, the unit price is different. And that's why our you want uh, the model or the total cost now that is relevant to our analysis include both the holding and the ordering cost as usual, which is our normal or the basic EOQ, plus now we are adding to it uh, the purchase cost. So the decision uh, procedure that we're going to follow here um, incorporates a trade-off, a trade-off between ordering a large quantity so that we can benefit from this price discount that supplier is providing us and increasing our uh, carrying costs because you remember we discussed that a lot that uh, when you uh, 
when you order large quantity you'll be holding a lot of inventory that you're not using and you incur a carrying cost and in the AOQ model we try to balance between this and the ordering cost now we are adding if one third component which is the purchase cost so when we increase the quantity we can benefit from price discount but we will be incurring more carrying costs so we're going to do that in our systematic procedure.